What's up everyone? I'm Nature Hacker from teethpowder.com and today we're going to be talking about INTPs and why they are pretty cool. And uh, I am an INTP, so um, I think that's important for people who actually are the personality type to be making videos because then you can actually like watch how they uh, talk about things or portray things and you can kind of get a sense for what an INTP is actually like in real life. So um, um, one thing to kind of understand about an INTP is we're kind of, um, we're kind of a, a yin yang with ENTPs. Now ENTPs are more outgoing. Uh, they, their hero is extroverted intuition. So they're going to talk about what they think, what they perceive. Uh, I don't want to say think or perceive because those are kind of different. Uh, but what they intuit about the world, what their intuition is about the world, they like to talk about that. Like what their intuition is about your life, what their intuition is about this product and things like that. And that's how they are going to uh, go through the world, the, the ENTP, right? They're going to go through the world with that and then they're going to think about it a little bit internally. Um, but what an INTP is, is he he or she is thinking internally that's what they that's their hero is internal thinking so they're gonna they're the thinkers they're gonna be you know thinking 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 they're not gonna be like um talking about what their intuition is and kind of gathering data like an entp so i see entps as scientists okay so the entps are ones who are um you know, I wonder if, or, you know, well, here's a fact, you know, or, um, you know, things like that. Like, like, and, um, so basically they're like, well, 43% of people think this. And you're like, well, how do you know that? And you're like, and the ENTP would be like, well, I did a poll, I did a survey and I, you know, saw. So an ENTP is like, it's like a salesperson, but also a scientist kind of in one. And that's what an ENTP is. The INTP interacts with the ENTP and takes the ENTP's data and um, and, and, and analyze and make sure that it's legit, right? So an INTP can absolutely analyze data uh, to make sure that the conclusions of the ENTP were right. And then when the INTP has that data and conclusions, the INTP can then design, okay? So the INTP is the designer. The ENTP is a scientist. The INTP is a designer. INTP, you can also think of it as an inventor. Do I want to say engineer? Not really. I, I don't want to say engineer. I mean, engineer, there could be, there's many different types of engineers. A design engineer, an INTP could be a great design engineer, but not necessarily the other types of engineers. The other types of engineers are actually best as logisticians like I... STJ or something. I don't know. It's the number two thing. Um, not, not the number two. The, the number, yeah, the logistician number two thing. So I, I personally like the actual engineers you see out there are prob. I think they're mostly going to be probably INTJs are going to be most of the engineers. And, um, and the one below that in the physical realm, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but, um, the logistician, you can look up the logistician. Uh, but also some engineers, like if they're manufacturing, if they're kind of hands-on engineers, they're probably going to be uh, ENTJs, okay? So the typical engineer is not your INTP. The INTP is more of the designer, uh, more of the inventor, right? So that is what an INTP is like. So if you see a cool invention, that's probably by an INTP. But if you see a cool idea that led to a cool invention, the idea probably came from an ENTP. Uh, they're kind of the scientists. They're the ones just kind of interacting with the world, discovering things in the world. Man, I found this awesome uh, new restaurant or I found this awesome, uh, I don't know, this awesome place that's really cool. We should go there. You know, and the INTP is kind of like, huh, that sounds pretty cool. Um, you know, tell me more about it, you know, things like that. So the INTP is more thinking. The ENTP is more exploring, more kind of intellectually exploring, more curious. The ENTP is more curious. The INTP is more like, 
I want to design something friggin' awesome, right? So you want to do the INTP wants to invent something new, wants to design something new, and they're going to use data collected by an ENTP. So that's kind of what an INTP is, and the INTP. And there is some playfulness too, because the ENTP is extremely playful, and that's why everybody likes ENTPs, is because they're just fun people, and especially the INTPs. The INTPs, instead of thinking the ENTPs are just doofy and weird or whatever, like maybe an INTJ would think an ENTP is just kind of like over the top, but an INTP really responds well to ENTPs and really enjoys their kind of quirkiness and their and their uh, playfulness, the INTP really enjoys that. And there can be great friendships uh, between ENTPs and INTPs. Um, like I think Rhett and Link from Good Mythical Morning is a, um, uh, well, Rhett is an INTP and Link is an ENTP. So um, they can make great pairs, they can make great partners. Um, and uh, in terms of the INTP, um, there, another good partner for the INTP, a forward partner for the INTP is the INTJ, okay? The INTJ is um, kind of more judgmental, like, you know, so the ENTP is extremely playful and extremely intuitive. The INTP is extremely thinking and kind of a little bit playful and intuitive. Um, so, you know, you'll notice a little bit of playfulness with an INTP. And then INTJ doesn't really have any of that. They are more calculating and planning, um, and they probably have some like sensing or feeling in there, you know, as far as their playfulness. Um, so they they might you know think that the INTP's playfulness is a little goofy or whatever, but um, but INTJs respond well to the thinking of the. Um, of the INTP, that the, the very logical thinking, like um, the the INTJ can see, can understand the INTP's uh, inventions and the INTP's theories, and what the INTJ is looking at, it, it, they're not using their intuition to judge your theories or your inventions. They're using um, they're using their oh, I think they have int in. Uh, um, their internal uh, intuition, right? So instead of an external intuition, which kind of can come off as kind of goofy or playfulness, um, they have an uh, introverted intuition. So they're going to be judging your theories and inventions, um, and they're going to be intuiting it out, feeling it out in their mind to see if it holds true. And they can absolutely also... Um, look at your and they also have uh, uh, they have extroverted thinking so they have a pl more playful way of thinking but they can also kind of sense your um, introverted thinking on something so your your logic they can sense that and they can articulate that so they can articulate logic that you were using that the INTP was using the INTJ can articulate the logic that the INTP was using to come up with it the INTP has the logic in his head but isn't necessarily expressing it it's just it's all internal but the INTJ can say okay so uh, the logic that you were using Mr. INTP was boom 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 and boom so they can express logic very well but they can't necessarily come up with the logic as well okay so they definitely can obviously you know just like an INTP can can do a lot of the ENTP stuff the INTJ can also do a lot of the INTP stuff but in general the INTP is better at logic better at um, seeing okay you know inventions um, theories things like that so then with the INTJ uh, does and you know this is kind of outside my realm, um, but uh, but, the, but from what I can sense, the INTJ will use the INTP's theories and inventions to create a plan, a game plan um, that they can hand off to an ENT. 
ENTJ <clears throat> to actually execute. So the ENTJ is the executor, the person who actually can do work and follow somebody else's plan. See, an INTP is not going to really want to follow somebody else's plans uh, because they feel like that the plans might not be the best or why are these why are you having me follow this plan why can't i do a different plan you know so that's why an entj is good at actually following plans okay and an int or yeah an entj is good at following plans intj is good at following um a theory or an invention so they can they will basically take your theory and come up with a plan to put it into practice so as an INTP, you're going to want to kind of sell your ideas. I don't want to call them ideas. You want to sell your, I guess you, yeah, let's call them ideas. Uh, you want to sell your ideas or your inventions or your, um, or your theories. You want to actually be able to sell those to an INTJ who's actually going to make it happen. Because if you don't do that, if, if you don't interact with anybody else, <clears throat> your theories are probably never going to be put into practice. So you're going to need INTJs in order to get your theories into the world um, in a, a practical way. Um, and it's the same thing with the ENTPs. Um, you know, people you know like them for their outgoing uh, nature and playfulness, but also, you know, if they're the ones out there observing everything about the world and coming up with all these awesome observations, and there's no INTP to actually formulate that into a theory or um into into a theory or an invention then all their observations were for nothing right i mean yeah they're out there they're playful they're having a good time but they're also figuring things out about the world they're actually good figuring things out about people okay they're actually figuring these things out and how are they going to use that information they really aren't they really can't use that information okay so they need to hand that off to an INTP to take the information they've gathered and put it into a usable package, okay? A package that makes logical sense. Then, but what good is this package that makes logical sense to the INTP? It's not like they're actually gonna to do anything about it, right? And it's, it's okay if they don't, it absolutely. Sometimes you can, like I've actually developed my INTJ and my ENTJ and my ENTP I have all of them to some extent and you have to if you're running your own business as a sole proprietor if you have a, a business that is taking observations creating theories and inventions creating plans on how to make your invention making your actual invention and then getting feedback from the community about your invention you're doing all of them you're doing everything Okay, so I, I, I can do everything. And I think it's important that people actually do develop that to a good extent. Um, and then when they have people actually fill these roles, they can get those people up and running on the role. The person doesn't have to invent the role all from scratch. So, and that's important because most people aren't developed enough in order to work at a startup from scratch. They want to be given something to work with, something that, okay, I got this. Okay, thanks for your plan, Mr. INTP. I'll take it from here. I'll improve the plan, but thank you for this plan as a start, right? Or the, um, yeah, and, you know, and, and the ENTJ could be like, you know, thanks, Mr. INTP, for actually making it and kind of, <clears throat> you know, doing that grunt work, but I'll take it from here. Like, you're not really cut out for doing the grunt work, Mr. INTP. Okay, so, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the way this all works. And um, so it's good to experiment, experience the other roles. And it feels cool to be able to kind of step in somebody else's shoes. Uh, but in general, you're going to want to try to work towards um, finding other people that you can work with and you can synergize with. So this process can, everybody can be working in their strength and you can actually be very efficient because an INTP trying to make stuff is not going to be very efficient at doing it. Um, you know, it might be fun to try it, might be fun to get some experience, but in general, they're just not gonna be efficient, okay? So that's pretty much it. Um, you know, if you're an ENTP, uh, you're gonna have to sell your observations to the INTP. Um, you know, you're gonna be like, hey, Mr. INTP, uh, I noticed that, you know, most people are, you know, 50% of, um, 
I noticed if it, I, I did a poll and 50% of all uh, ENTJs uh, like the color blue. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. You know, let's see if we can put that into the theory. Uh, so, but the what the INTP is going to be looking at is like they're going to they're going to be able to really think through like how you did that survey. They're going to be like, okay, well, was it statistically significant? And you're going to be like, um, well, you know, I had a significant of uh, confidence level of ninety percent. And I'm like, okay, well, how about you go to pull a few more people, get it up to ninety five percent, and then I'll be confident enough to to make sure that my theories uh, line up with that data point, right? So then I might have to tweak my theory. My theory might've said that um, only under a quarter of ENTJs like blue. And you're telling me you did a poll. My theory is a quarter of ENTJs prefer blue because, you know, my theory would be uh, 25% of ENTJs prefer blue because 25% are boys. Right, that could be my theory, and Mr. ENTP is like, well, Mr. INTP, I did a survey and it's fifty percent like blue because um, they like blue, and I'll be like, well, that doesn't really line up with my theory currently, but let me see the data that you used to um, to to figure that out, and um, and if I think it, if I think it's solid, then I'm going to change my theory. That well, okay, well, if 50% like blue, maybe 50% of ENTJs are boys. Is that true, Mr. ENTP? Or 50% of ENTJs boys? Yes. Oh, okay, great. So my theory works. You know, so that's kind of how the INTP and the ENTP work together in that way. Um, and it's the same with an INTJ. They they might be like, um, I don't really like that example I was using before. So let's try another one. Um, the INTJ might be like, okay, um, we're going to mix uh, 30 grams of, uh, of uh, dicalcium phosphate uh, with 20 grams um, tricalcium phosphate because uh, dicalcium phosphate um, helps with uh, this and tricalcium phosphate helps with this. And then I might go to them and say, well, actually, um, dicalcium phosphate doesn't actually help with that. Um, you know, what, what, what's really happening is it's the, it's the octocalcium phosphate interacting with the tetracalcium phosphate that's actually helping with that problem. And so, and so the INTJ is going to be like, hmm, yeah, that doesn't really line up with my plan that I had before. So, what is the logic that you used to under to to think that the, it was the octocalcium phosphate that's actually acting with the tricalcium phosphate to cause that positive effect? And I'd be like, well, the logic I used is um, this this data point and this data point uh, both point to octocalcium phosphate is doing this. And now, what octocalcium phosphate does? is that this data point and this data point say that octocalcium phosphate actually reacts with tricalcium phosphate and that is how the quadratic phosphate is created and the, and the INTJ is like okay intuitively um, they're, they're gonna be like okay no no they're gonna say okay logically that makes sense okay so my and my intuition yeah my intuition is um, uh, that 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 does kind of line up with other things that uh, that I was planning over here. So they're, they're going to change their formula. So okay, so Mr. INT, uh, ENTJ actually instead of mixing the 30 grams of um, of uh, dicalcium phosphate, uh, let's let's change that to say 15 grams of oxycalcium phosphate and 15 grams of tricalcium phosphate. So let's let's uh, let's do that instead. So they make that new plan. And then uh, the ENTJ will actually make that. And it's not that the ENTJ is unthinking, and that's absolutely not true. They actually are very much thinking people. Um, and what they will come up with is they'll come up with policies on how to actually do things. So they're going to be like, okay, you're going to use this teaspoon to measure out the 15 grams because... Um, because the teaspoon is more efficient at measuring it than just uh, 
way, tapping it out of the bottle. Okay, so you're gonna go in with a teaspoon, boom, that's automatically gonna be 15 grams. You're gonna be good on that. So the ENTJ is creating these policies of how, um, of how these, uh, how these things are actually done in the real world. You know, the, the INTJ gives them the recipe, okay? The INTJ gives them a recipe. The ENTJ makes the, um, kind of the, the, how, how to actually make it happen kind of thing. Okay. Oh, you know what? Grab this thing. This thing is going to help you with that, doing that part. You know, or we need a better box cutter, or you know, the box cutter needs to be uh, yay long and uh, this deep because you know when you grab it with your hand, you want this much to be coming out. So that's kind of what an ENTJ is going to be doing. They're going to be kind of like the practical aspects of making something happen. Um, and then you have back to the ENTP. The ENTP is going to be like. Um, Okay, uh, let me go talk to the customer and see what they say about it. Um, you know, and the ENTJ, yeah, will basically provide them with a product, right? Uh, we'll provide the ENTP with a product. And the ENTJ will be like, all right, man, got it done. Here you go. Go get them. And the ENTP will take that out and actually find a customer for it and, and know, and like, know, um, okay, uh, this. You know this. You know people like this tend to like this product, so I'm gonna go find more people like that to get it. <clears throat> and you know some people are saying that well the product is doing this and this, and that's not really what they want. They want this and this. So then what happens is the ENTP will go to the INTP and say, hey, you know this is cool and all, but the customer was saying that they want uh, this part of it longer and that this part's too short to actually function properly. And the INTP will be like, okay, okay, um. Uh, is it more than just one? You sure that's not just a, a one-off? And he'd be like, no, you know, I'm getting that consistently. This type of customer is consistently telling me this, but the other types, they're all fine. But it's just this one type of customer that's really having this problem here. And I'll be like, okay, okay, I can definitely take that into account. And let me change the uh, design of it, of the product, uh, to, uh, to, to, to work with that. Okay, so... That's kind of how this this chain of command works, and it's a it's a circle, and I call it the personality torus on um, naturehacker.org. Um, so that's kind of how this works, um, and INTPs fit into it. They're the designer, they're um, they're the quintessential inventor, and uh, they're the ones actually putting ideas, packaging ideas. I want to say creating ideas. They're packaging observations into a logical package. And that package can be used to actually create plans, which then create products. Um, and there you go. So they're, they're the designer. And a common, you know, good career path would be a design engineer, um, a designer, um, a, um, what else? trying to think of other uh, good careers for an inventor, right? But inventor is not really a career, right? So just uh, an INTP would be a sort of designer, uh, somebody who's just taking data, re looking into scientific papers, somebody who reads a lot of scientific papers, at least reads the abstracts of a lot of scientific papers, is probably an INTP, right? Um, so if they're if there's somebody's actually doing experiments and like trying to 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 um to, to try to prove um point to try to yeah create facts somebody that creates facts is an entp okay if you create a fact you know like you did a survey or um you uh put this chemical on this cell and this is what happened that is an ENTP. And then those are just facts. There, there's nothing holding the facts together. It's just um, A is 42.7 meters long. And it's like, well, why does that really matter? It doesn't matter unless you have an INTP who can put it into a logical package and actually make it matter. So it's not that ENTPs don't matter and INTPs do matter. It's that every 
personality type, every personality type is essential in order to accomplish something. So you need the person coming up with the facts. You know, these aren't just useless facts. They're useful to an INTP. And INTPs create inventions. And these aren't just useless inventions. They're useful to an INTJ. An INTJ come up with plans. And these aren't just useless plans. These plans can actually be put into play and to practice by an ENTJ. And these aren't just random products that the ENTJ is making. These are products that serve the customers uh, that um, of the ENTP, who, who basically the ENTP owns the customers, right? So the ENTJ is making products for the ENTP's customers. And those customers are providing feedback too. And that feedback is being funneled to INTPs who are using the feedback of the customers to change the design of the product. And that changes the plans and, and then the, that, that, that change prod, uh, that change design goes to the INTJ and they change the plans of how to make the product and so on and so on. So I honestly think that an INTJ would be a good technical writer um, because they're basically making the plans that the manufacturing people actually use to make something, right? So the INTP would be the designer. The uh, INTJ would be the technical writer. The ENTJ would be the manufacturing engineer or the people actually manufacturing the product. And the ENTP would be the customer service person, the sales engineer, they like to call them. Um, so I guess we can call these all engineers. Let's try to call them all engineers. INTP, design engineer. INTJ, um, wow, what kind of engineer would an INTJ be? Um, I don't know. <laughs> uh, ENTJ would be the manufacturing engineer, and ENTP would be the sales engineer. I'm just, I'm really stuck on what the INTJ what type of engineer they would be. Um, I think they would be... Let me pause it for a second think about this. Okay. Um, I think I got it, and it's, 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 it's way simpler than I thought. I, I Honestly, I think the INTJs are the actual engineers, right? So you've got your INTP as the design engineer. Uh, you've got your INTJ as the mechanical engineer, the electrical engineer, um, the chemical engineer, you know, one of those mechanical, electrical, or chemical, you know, or biological engineer, biomedical, uh, biosystems or whatever, you know, just a typical, a straight, a straight engineer is going to be the INTJ. The ENTJ is going to be the manufacturing engineer. And the ENTP is going to be the sales engineer. They're the boots on the ground. They're figuring out what the customer needs and everything like that, uh, which is very valuable. I mean, these are all valuable. These are all incredibly valuable and they're all the same value. You know, there's, I've seen basically sales engineers with the title of manufacturing engineer who are making more money than the other manufacturing engineers. Why? Because they're the ones interacting with the customer. And the person closest to the customer honestly has the most power because they're the ones who are getting the money, right? They're the ones bringing home the bacon is the, the, uh, the ENTPs. And typically ENTPs actually do make the most money. So just because you're called a sales engineer, you're not like a real engineer. I mean, they're just as important. You know, if you can deal with customers and and you know come up with points uh, that the customers make, kind of um, bring all that together into boom. Here's a point, and uh, boom, that goes the INTP. The INTP is absolutely going to act on it and improve the design. You know, so um, I would say the true engineers 
are the INTJs. The designers, the inventors are the INTPs. The um, manufacturing people, the people actually getting the thing made are the ENTJs. And the people interacting with the customer are the ENTPs. So every piece is just as important. You can't say like one is more important than the other. They're all equally important and they're all extremely distinct. So the number one thing you can do is not try to be something that you're not like, oh, I want to be more extroverted. Just be the best at what you can be and work on improving who you are. And it is good to experience other types too. Like um, take a week to actually get trained by any NTJ to actually make the product because it's just going to help. If everybody's cross-trained in all of these things, it's just going to help. And if somebody is sick or somebody's on leave or whatever, somebody else can kind of cover for them even though they're not the best at it. They can get the job done, not as efficiently, but they can do it. So, you know, or if somebody gets fired or somebody leaves, you know, you can cover until they can bring in a person who's really built for that job. So, um, I think it's great, you know, and, and it's sad to me when I see that um, these salespeople are actually uh, being taken out for algorithms like digital advertising can target certain customers with certain messages. And they're basically trying to, seems like they're trying to obsolete uh, the ENTP and those are the highest paid people. So if they can obsolete them, they get more money for the corporation. So there's, an, there's a reason to do that. And I think that when the ENTPs are actually taken out of an organization, the INTPs become almost redundant because without new information coming in from the ENTP, the INTP can't really do their job. And then, you know, they don't need a designer anymore. They don't need an inventor anymore. We just make the plans with the INTJ um, and we execute them with the ENTJ. And those are all they need. And so I think that the, there is this thing going around of they do want to replace humans and they do want to take humans out and they do want to basically just run it with INTJs and ENTJs. And the interesting thing here, uh, the very interesting thing to me is that um, let's, let's say that an INTP, um, they just don't care for your inventions and they don't care for your designs anymore we're just going to go with the de designs we already got we don't need any new designs this happens all the time this is actually the situation i was in in my last job yeah you know you, you come up with these new inventions and these new designs but we already have our product line i mean we don't need any new products we already got the designs for the products we just need little updates here and there and just little nothings um, and, um, but what we're going to do is we're just going to load you up with work. We're just going to load you up with stuff to do. And what happens to an INTP when they're just loaded up with stuff to do? Um, they're not good at getting stuff done. Okay. They're good at thinking. They're not good at doing stuff. An INTP isn't. So if you load an INTP <laughs> with like a to-do list of all this stuff to get done, they're not going to do very well. And what's going to happen to the INTP is they're going to basically switch in their brain into their dark side. And the dark side of the INTP is an ENTJ. So they'll switch into that, like, get stuff done personality type just in order to survive, right? Or else they're going to get fired. So they're going to switch. <clears throat> so that's probably what's going to happen in the future. What, um, if they keep pushing this to where they're trying to get humans out of the workforce um, and they just only want the INTJs and uh, ENTJs, uh, what's going to happen is the INTPs are going to convert temporarily into ENTJs and the ENTPs are going to convert into INTJs. So what's going to happen is you're still going to have all the personality types. They're just going to be in two roles instead of their actual roles. They're going to be in their dark side role. So what will happen is they're kind of being held in backup, in reserve, and when and when the system doesn't function well like that, because it won't, because it's just a system can't function without all four proper pieces. What's going to happen is things are going to start breaking down, and the people in their dark side roles are going to swap back into their real roles and actually start filling in and actually start making things better. So then it's going to go back to a human centric model instead of AI. Uh, centric. So I think that's how this is all going to play out um, with my extroverted intuition is what I am using to tell you all that. So anyway, 
thanks so much for watching uh stay tuned here um on teef powder uh, i come up with memes i'm also going to come up with um you know I'll, t I'll probably talk about personality uh types and because I think it's important uh, for any business and, you know, Chief Powder is a business to really have a firm grasp on personality types. And um, and also you, uh, you can stay tuned to this channel to learn more about um, oral health and teeth remineralization as well as personality type stuff and uh, memes uh, for uh, Teeth Powder. So thanks for watching. I am the Nature Hacker. You are the Nature Hacker. Let's do work.